Good morning and welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. We're not getting the extreme heat here in the Pacific Northwest that the rest of the United States is having, so it's been quite pleasant in the greenhouse and I haven't had to use the air conditioning in the house for a couple weeks now. That means it's also a good time to take care of projects outside the greenhouse, such as finally getting paint onto the cabins on the west end of my property. But between sanding and then painting, my arm holds out only long enough to do about one side per day. So come along today as I decide whether the dark green trim color stays or goes. This is the first coat of paint on these cabins in 30 years, so the siding is quite weathered. then on to painting. Getting the sides of these grooves is not fun. The bridge is a very big part of the view out the bedroom, and I want to paint it before filling the pool that's still a few months away during the rainy season. There are actually eight different components, so I'm having a hard time deciding what color or colors to paint it. So much so that I've made a blog post about it, link in the description down below for the creative among you to contribute your ideas. The north side gets full sun in the afternoon and evening, so this side was quite weathered and the sanding took a lot longer than the first two sides that received much less direct sun or rain. Got a second coat of green paint on the trim to be able to make a stay or go decision. My goal has been to sand or paint one side per day, but I got out to paint after work when this side was in direct sun. This is how far I got before finishing the first can of paint. I decided I was okay with calling it a night rather than opening the second can. My island car is a 22-year-old pickup that I bought almost 10 years ago for cheap. It didn't get driven much last year and the battery went dead. So today I'm pulling the old one to get a new one. Then I can finally clean up the debris piling up around this end of the property. One of the benefits of owning a mechanic's garage is not having to work on cars myself. I've never touched the battery before, so I called my son and watched a YouTube video for directions. This thingy is corroded to the battery, so I remove the wire for the disconnect. Then on to the positive. In abundance of caution, I put rubber gloves on the end of each wire. No sparky. Bye. 
The west side of the cabin was still in the shade when I finished messing around with the battery. The food drive pickup is this weekend, so my sister and I are heading to Costco on the mainland to stock up to fill our bags. But there's still about an hour before I have to catch the ferry. I managed to get the ladder work done. The rest I can reach from the ground. Let's see what's happening in the food garden. Flowers on the bush beans and a nice set on the pole beans. Finally, flowers on these tomatoes. Romaine sprouted from the end of a store-bought head. I may actually cut bok choy this week. Lettuce for dinner tonight. One of the peas is producing, the other is declining. Another romaine from Cutoff. This cucumber is finally doing something. These are 100-day watermelon, so I don't expect to get ripe fruit this season. After fertilizing, the calamondin has new growth. This cucumber has been producing for a while now and has a few coming on, but doesn't look too good. The key lime is only slightly better after application of a 733 fertilizer and blood meal. I early to get my bags out in time for pickup. Also to get the assembly instructions out of these boxes delivered yesterday. Hopefully it won't be too difficult to assemble. This lawnmower from the previous owners has been under the deck at the trailer. Time for it to become my first foray into putting out a curbside free pile. I'm having a hard time deciding what to put in here for the permanent planting. This area gets up to eight hours of sun in the summer, but I don't want to have to water this area. It's about a three degree slope and anything planted here will have to be deer resistant. Between the poor soil and lack of rain, I've been really impressed how well these wildflowers have done. This is the deer resistant mix. I'm in zone 8B. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I love these cool and quiet summer mornings to look around. Today I noticed how bad the moss is on the gutter. Definitely need to get to this before the rainy season. I painted this deck and benches two years ago, so they need a good cleaning also. The gray is almost the same as the cabin, and the green on the bench was just left over from a different project. Didn't think I would like it, but I did two years ago, and I still do. So there you have it. The dark green cabin trim is a definite no to be replaced by the light green from the benches outside the trailer. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And come back next time to see how the colors come together on the first cabin.